What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Cam ATL, and welcome back to another NFL video with your boy. Drop a like down below, comment anything in the comment section, enter your name into the $50 giveaway I do every single week on this channel. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, I just want to let it be known, Miss Rachel's playing in the background. If you hear Miss Rachel, um, and if you don't know who Miss Rachel is, it's some babies like to watch. And my son's in there watching Miss Rachel right now. They're singing some song. I don't know what's going on, but I can hear it loud and clear right now. Um, but anyway, uh, if you hear that, just ignore it, all right? Um, or let your little baby listen to it in the background. All right, so here we go. First and foremost, you guys know how I like to do it with these showdowns. By the way, greenlightdfs.com for week 15. We haven't lost since like week six. It's been an amazing NFL season. Pro I would definitely say... It is probably my most profitable NFL season I've had ever. Like, I'm profiting a shit ton this year. So, it's a huge NFL season. Um, it has been a big one. And I'm excited to just keep that going tonight with this Week 15 showdown and start Week 15 off with a bang. Thank you guys for joining me as always. Uh, hit up Greenlight DFS to join the squad, get the prize picks, all that good stuff. I'll be working on the prize picks here in a minute after I get off of here. And also NBA prize picks, which yesterday was not only a cash on prize picks, but a cash on DFS as well. So, it was a sweep day. Uh, in fantasy sports in general at Greenlight last night, so another fantastic night. I'm um, excited to just keep it going, man. We've been hot and everything, and I'm just, you know, it is what it is. You know how we get. We get super hot at times, so now is the time to definitely roll. Now, let's look at this game, all right? So San Francisco, Seattle. Let's look at their strong suits, blah, blah, blah. Now, San Francisco runs the ball a good bit. They only throw the ball like 58% of the time compared to Seahawks throwing at 64%, which is cool, and it makes sense here because – Seattle is the underdog at home by like three or four. Okay, so here's my thought process. Seattle struggles versus the run, whether it's through the air, whether it's on the ground, it doesn't matter. Okay, so my number one person I'm locking, shouldn't be a surprise, Christian McCaffrey is going to be my captain. Now, we have amazing value and we're going to cover that. We have value. I really like this tonight, today with Debo Samuel out on San Francisco, and I'll talk about them in a second. Um, but Christian McCaffrey's my guy, okay? Almost every line I've made, I've played with a couple different versions with him not at captain, but almost every line that is my favorite so far has been Christian McCaffrey at captain because at the end of the day, you got a backup quarterback in, so that's more rushing opportunities for McCaffrey. They're going to run the ball more plain and simple than they even have done this year. So the rate that I said they passed a minute ago, that's just that's with Jimmy G. They might pass even less now. So... Christian McCaffrey is going to get a ton of work here. He's going to get a ton of little dump offs. I love Christian McCaffrey. He's in a fantastic spot here against Seattle who struggles versus running backs. Second most fantasy points on the year to running backs. Christian McCaffrey is my go-to guy. And it's a good game script for him with San Francisco expected to be up in this one. So uh, Christian McCaffrey is my go-to. Now, obviously, if I'm expecting San Francisco to be up and Christian McCaffrey to just be pounding it down their throats, no homo, DK Metcalf is the guy I'm going to go with on this side. Now, DK Metcalf is cheaper than Lockett, um, and they're both equal in my opinion. But I have Metcalf projected better by three points, and here's why I have Metcalf over Lockett. When you look at the matchup, okay, the matchup is really beautiful for Metcalf. Now, one thing I noticed immediately is the size difference Metcalf is going to have against Lenoir. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, but Lenoir, his last name's L-E-N-O-I-R for San Francisco. Any San Francisco fans, uh, if you guys want to pronounce that name right in the comments section or type it out how it said, whatever, uh, what is his name? Diamadre or Dore. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, y'all. But Lenoir is the cornerback that's going to see a lot of DK. He's going to be trying to stop DK Metcalf most of this game. This dude is 5'11". I'm taller than this guy. Okay? I'm taller than this guy that DK Metcalf is facing, and DK Metcalf is much taller than me. So I'm just put, I'm putting that in perspective for you for a second. Not much taller than me, but he's taller than me. DK Metcalf is probably th two to three inches taller than me. Okay? I am a couple inches taller than Noir, the cornerback for San Francisco. That puts in perspective how much bigger DK Metcalf is going to be over Noir, or however you say his name tonight. 
DK Metcalf is going to be that guy for Geno when he's, you know, third. he needs a third down conversion or they're in the red zone. He needs to throw it up somewhere. If they're struggling to move the ball, this is exactly where they're going to look because DK Metcalf has that big size advantage in this matchup. DK, we already know, is an, a superhuman athletically. This dude is going to catch anything you throw it up there. DK Metcalf's going to have a huge game here. I love him. He's got the best matchup you can ask for on this team going against Lone War. Um, I have him projected three points higher than Lockett, and he's cheaper than Lockett, so he's my focus on the Seattle side. I am going to make a bold prediction here, and if it kills me, it kills me. I'm fading Kenneth Walker. Some of you might be like, oh my God, you're so dumb. You suck. That's fine. You have that. You have that. You're, you have the right to your opinion, sir. But here's the thing. San Francisco has been elite versus running backs. They're top in the league versus running backs. Fantasy points allowed like nine on average or something over the season. Something crazy. They're amazing versus the run. Kenneth Walker's been a little wobbled. Um, he's missed some games. He is only 7'6", so it's a good price for him. And could he get like a red zone carry? Could they get down in the red zone and then red zone carry into the shore? I don't expect him to have a ton of success, though, on the ground. I really don't. So with that being said, I'm folk and with the game script as well, I'm just focused more on the pass game of Seattle. I'm willing to, especially if Kenneth Walker is going to be high owned, which I think he's going to have decent ownership. I think if he's going to be high owned, I'm willing to just fade that completely and get different right there. So I am saying that to y'all most likely. I'm probably not going to play Kenneth Walker tonight. It's just not the best script. It's not the best matchup at all. It just doesn't feel amazing to me. But in GPPs, I still haven't projected okay. I'm going to bring that down, though. That's just that's just too high. I, I think he's more down to like, I think Kenneth Walker's, yeah, maybe 12. Maybe he gets that tonight. I think he struggles tonight. So I'm really going to move that down now, and I'm going to adjust that later as well as I do more research on the matchup. But, yeah, Kenneth Walker is, yeah. Um, so, yeah, me and my uncle will debate that projection, and we'll figure it out. But uh, I don't love Kenneth Walker, okay? Um, so with that being said, Brock Purdy, sure you can, but he's missing a top target of his. Uh, at 9-6, you can play Purdy. That's fine. Seattle obviously is the worst de uh, the the defense that's n like the worst in this game, so you can pick on that if you want to. Lockett is sure in play for sure. Brandon Ayuk, I definitely love here at 8-8. Eight, eight. Now, but here's the deal: for my third core play, I'm gonna go a value. You guys know how much I like to go values here um, for my third core plays to just make sure y'all get that extra oomph in your lineups to be able to have that value guy and be able to get another you know some good balance in there after ray ray mcleod the third ray ray mcleod is the direct beneficiary beneficiary benefit i don't know anyway ray ray mcleod i haven't had my full coffee yet y'all all right so ray ray is the direct guy who's going to benefit from debo being out Okay, he played 45% of snaps or something last game after Debo went down. Uh, he's going to play even more this week, and he's only 1,200. In my opinion, he's locked with them playing from behind. Them uh, not playing from behind. My bad. He's locked at only 1,200 playing that many snaps. Just the fact he's going to be on the field. That's the biggest thing when it comes to the value. Is these guys. The more they're on the field and have the mo more opportunity, the more chances they have to hit for you and the more chances you have for a takedown. So Ray Ray McLeod is going to be on the field more than any of these other value options that you see down there. Okay, so I absolutely love Ray Ray McLeod as my value option. And that's my core. We got Christian McCaffrey at captain because of the game script, a lot of run, a lot of dump offs. DK Metcalf on the other side playing catch up. He's got a huge size advantage. Like it's like five inches or something like that on the cornerback. He will be matched up with tonight. Ray Ray McLeod, the third as the value. Like I said, he directly benefits with Debo being out. So he's the main guy there. Um, now, obviously, you have Ayuk benefiting. George Kittle will benefit. Um, Jawan Jennings will benefit. These guys will all get little benefits as well. I love Brandon Ayuk. Don't get me wrong. But in my favorite right now, okay, in my favorite right now, I haven't been able to do it. I haven't been able to pay that eight something for him because there's other spots that I like more than him straight up. And I've had the value where I think it's fine. Now, other value guys, Danny Gray is 200. 
I have him as probably one of the best values on the slate. Now, he's not going to play a ton of snaps, but he is going to get a decent amount of opportunity with Debo out at only 200. At least that's what I'm expecting. All right, I'm expecting him to get decent opportunity for only 200, okay? Juszczyk played a good amount of snaps last week. He's not getting a huge target share or nothing like that, but we know with Kyle, Juszczyk, he could always get like a little red zone target out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Those little play action throws to the fullback type of thing with Kyle. So uh, he's interesting at 3K. Let's see. Uh, anything else I want to talk about? I don't have a ton of interest in either of the tight ends. Um, uh, well, sorry, except for George Kittle. I'm talking on the Seattle side. I don't have a ton of interest in the tight ends over on the Seattle side. Um, to be honest with you, I'm on Lockett and Metcalf. Lockett and Metcalf and Geno are the three Seattle guys that I want the most. On the San Francisco side, I want Christian McCaffrey, then I want Ayuk, then I want Purdy, then I want uh, those other value options that come up after that. So that's pretty much how I'm attacking this slate, y'all. Yes, I don't know how you feel about it, but I am fading Kenneth Walker the third tonight probably. All right, YOLO. Most likely I'm fading it, okay? Um, and if he's high-owned, I'm going to be extremely happy if he's high-owned. I hope he is. All right, so... Um, and if he goes off, he goes off, y'all. Those are the chances you take in showdown slates. At the end of the day, you can't play everyone. You know what I mean? Like, especially in my position. Like, every showdown slate, if if somebody does bad or we lose a showdown slate, somebody always makes sure they, like, DMs me or something and be like, oh, how could you fade this guy, whoever went off? It's like, dude, I can't play everyone. You know what I'm saying? Like, there, there's just no way to play everyone. So understand that, y'all. You can't play everyone. You have to predict how you expect this game to go, play it the best of your ability, and then if somebody that you weren't expecting goes off, you just got to eat that. You know what I mean? But I think we have a good grasp on this game. I think it's safe to assume Kenneth Walker struggles against San Francisco's run defense and uh, grab some of that pass game, especially with the script from behind, too. I think everything just screams fade Kenneth Walker and play the pass game. Um, but but I will add, add in here, Kenneth Walker is cheap at 7-6. He is. We have to except the fact he is cheap but honestly i've made multiple versions without him and i love him so far so we'll see thank you guys for joining me as always y'all have a great night tonight man smash this first slate of the night uh, of the week um <clears throat> week 15 is going to be another big one for the squad greenlightdfs.com join the squad we will be playing Saturday main slate for nfl and we will be playing each of the saturday game showdowns like we did on thanksgiving Okay, so we will be playing the three-game slate at Greenlight, the, each of those games showdown slates, and then Sunday's slate, and then Monday. Okay, that's what you're going to be getting for week 15 this week. So um, just to let everybody know, I've had a lot of questions about that. So thank you guys for joining me as always. Y'all have a great weekend, and I'm out. Peace.